Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class and this is one in a series of several videos featuring Penny Black's newest scenic stamps and in today's video I will be featuring this really happy stamp called Sweet Sales and I will be showing you two different techniques that you can do with this stamp. The first as shown on this card gives you a lovely flowing watercolor look to your card and the second card features an ink blending technique. And both of these are really great for beginners, so do not be afraid of these scenic stamps or these techniques if you are new to stamping or you like simpler cards. Before I begin stamping, I will mention that I will have a full supply list for both of these cards at the very end of the video up on screen. So if you want to look at it in more detail at that time, you can just hit pause. So to begin, we're going to do the technique that features the ink blending technique. So I'm stamping in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool and I'm stamping onto smooth white cardstock. And I'm going to begin by inking up the largest areas of the stamp using some Ranger archival inks and these are in the mini ink pad mini ink pad size and I love this mini size because it allows me to get the ink onto the areas of the stamp that I want it and I'm able to avoid some of the other areas that I don't want. So I started with a light green and now I'm going in with a darker green and I just dabbed off a little bit of that darker green to um, so that it didn't have a complete coverage of that hill I want it more just up towards the top of the tree to add some shading. So with these scenic stamps, you can really do your coloring and your shading directly onto the stamp using your inks, which is, for me, much easier than actually painting on the shading inside of like a line art image. That's why if you're new to stamping or you usually make simpler cards, this is a great step if you want to try something new but also get some really good results. So now I've moved up to the tree and if I get any ink in places I don't want it then I just go ahead and wipe it off with my finger or you could use a dry paper towel to wipe that off too. I did the lightest color and now I'm going in with a darker color around the edges. If I need to get just a point of the tree I can sort of turn that ink pad and put it on with the corner. And you can see with just those two different ink colors you get some really beautiful shading right onto that tree. Now for the more detailed areas where I need to be a bit more selective in applying the ink, I'm going to use some Arteza Real Brush Markers. Any water-based marker will work for this, so like your Tombow Dual Brush Pens or your Zig Markers or your Distress Markers all work great for this technique. You may find, um, like for these solid areas, that you need to stamp it a couple of times. And you can see why having a stamp positioning tool like the Misty is just really important for all of these stamping te techniques because they allow you to work in small sections on the stamp. I'm going to color with that marker just directly onto the paper itself, so sorry it's hidden there behind my head, but I'm just coloring just to really darken that up and follow the stamping that I already did. Now you can see, you could actually stop here. If you wanted a card with just a tree on it, you could do um, just the tree. So you can use just parts of these scenic stamps too to give them a completely different look. Now for the rest of the parts of this stamp, I'm going to use the markers to get in and apply the color where I want it. For this technique with the ink blending, you can really use any type of ink pads that you want and any of those water-based markers that you want because we will be sealing this in with some embossing before we add our background colors. So feel free to go through your stash and get those ink pads out that you love. I just recommend looking for some of those mini sizes uh, to make it easier to apply the ink. You could also do the entire image with the markers, but I do find for like large expanses of area like that hill at the bottom or the top part of the tree, ink pads just allow you to get more even coverage because you're padding the flat surface of the ink pad onto the stamp as opposed to brushing on the color with a brush that's in your marker. So it just gives you more even coverage, but you certainly could do markers to color the entire thing if that's all you had on hand. Now I have a lot of fun here with these little sailboats, just doing them in a variety of bright colors and just getting those stamped down. Now 
And I think this stamp would be great uh, for any type of masculine cards thinking of you, summertime cards, birthday cards for the summer. These scenic stamps have a lot of uses because they are just very general and work well with lots of different sentiments that you add. Even encouragement cards these are great for. This might also be nice for a retirement card. Now before we do our next step, I'm just going to clean off my stamp. So I sprayed it with water and I'm just wiping it down with a micro uh, fiber cloth and that gets it really clean and really dry and doesn't leave any little fuzz or pieces like you get left behind sometimes from baby wipes. Now without moving the stamp or my paper, I'm going to pat that paper with an anti-static bag. And then I'm going to ink the stamp with some Versamark ink. And this is just a clear sticky ink that will allow us to do some embossing. So I'm just patting that onto the stamp and then I will go ahead and stamp it right on top of all that stamping we've already done. And there is a lot of detail and a lot of solid area to this stamp so I'm also going to do this uh, just a second time just to be sure that I've completely covered it and gotten all of that detail. Then I will remove this from my stamp positioning tool and sprinkle it with clear embossing powder and I will heat that to set. And what that's going to do is seal in all of those colors and it is going to resist any of those background colors we're going to add. So all of the greens and the blues and the colors of the sailboats are going to stay nice and bright and bold even as we apply our background colors. Now the first tier I'm kind of working on the beach area and I'm using a Ranger Detail Ink Blending Tool and this is just like a little tool with a tiny little sponge on the top and it allows you to add your ink blending, your sponging, just to a very small area. So it's perfect for these scenic stamps and kind of getting into these little areas like this beach area here. When you do your ink blending for this technique, I recommend that you use dye inks. So I'm using some memento inks and also some Make Art Blendable dye ink on this card. And those are all dye inks. So are your distress inks. They would work really well for this too. Now I'm using a fingertip sponge dauber. It's just a little bit bigger than that detail ink blending tool and fits just perfectly here into the water area just using a circular motion and sometimes sort of a back and forth scrubbing motion so I can keep it within the line so to speak. And you can see already how this scene is just coming together. So here I'm just going to mask off this edge of the water so I can get that blue right up to the edge. I didn't want to leave any white area there. And then again I've grabbed that detail ink blending tool so I can just have a lot of control in getting that right up to the edge. And to mask that off I'm just holding a piece of thin uh, scratch computer paper right there. If you were worried about that slipping you could use the edge of a post-it note or some masking paper. And this is just also allowing me to get some darker shading in to that water area. Now I'm using a jumbo sponge applicator to add some color up here to the sky. I don't need to worry about doing any masking there with that water because it is also blue so it's fine if they kind of fade into each other. You could also use an ink blending tool with a foam pad from Ranger. They all work well. I just have several in my stash so I just grab for whatever I have for that particular color. I'm going to use a little bit of green ink just to sponge here up on the tree and down at the base of the image. I will be matting this uh, so you won't see all of these edges that look kind of rough here at the bottom and off to the sides. And that's kind of nice that you can start off of the edge and work your way on um, and then sort of leave off areas that you don't want. Now to finish off this card, I have used a stamp from the center set called Choose Happy. I've grabbed, pulled up three different sets here that I think are really great for these scenic stamps and I just thought you might like to see all of those for some ideas for sentiments that you can use with the scenic stamps. And then I added a simple white frame around the outer edge of this card to finish it off. 
and this card is just slightly smaller than the 5 by 7 card size. Now for the next card we're going to be doing some similar colors but in more of a watercolor style and watercolor technique. So I stamped the grass and the tree just like I did on the first card using those archival inks, only on this card I am stamping onto Canson 140 pound watercolor cold press paper because I'm going to be painting and adding water to this. There is some texture to this paper so sometimes like here on the trunks I'm just going directly with the marker to the image just to smooth out that stamping and give it a nice crisp look. Now for this watercolor technique you will want to be sure that you are using markers and inks that are archival or waterproof so that when we do our painting on the top of it none of this stamping is going to bleed or blend. So instead of the real brush markers here I am using the Faber-Castell Stampers Big Brush Pens. These are an India ink marker and they will dry permanent so I can do the painting right on top. And then for the stamping, like I mentioned before, I'm using the Ranger Mini Archival Ink Pads and those are also waterproof and permanent. I'm just adding a few of these details in. Now here I've kept with a very similar color scheme as to the first card, just using a different technique. But this stamp I think you could do a lot of really beautiful different looks to your color schemes. I think you could do some really beautiful sunsets, you can do that tree, you could almost make this like a season changing card, like a fall looking card and add some yellows and oranges to that tree. If you did a sunset, you could almost do most of the stamping in black and then do a really dynamic sky. So there's just a lot of different ways to get more from this stamp. Now once I was done stamping, I'm going to do my painting. So I've pulled out my Sakura Koi Field Sketchbox watercolors and I'm just doing very, very basic painting on this image. You can use whatever watercolors you have in your stash and you like to paint with and basically just paint it in. Um, none of that is going to bleed or blend on you. You could add mix different blues here in the water. While it's still wet, I like to drop in different shades of blue just to give that some variation so it looks a little more finished. I was not worried about perfection on this watercoloring. If there were sort of blooms or lines um, to the watercolor, that was fine with me. I wanted it to look like it had been painted. And I've said this before about these scenic stamps, but these are just really fun to work with. If you are looking for something to sort of spice up your stamping, <laughs> these are a great place to start just because they um, are something different than flowers, different than critters, and they kind of get you thinking differently about stamping and painting. And I think when you're looking at something that's relaxing, like a picture of sailboats and the water and you're spending your time looking at that and thinking about that the whole process just becomes very relaxing and calming too. I'm just applying my paints here in a similar way as I actually did the ink pads with the blues and the greens down at the base and some green, more greens up here in the tree. Something else you can do with these scenic stamps like this is just do a very, if you want a very simple card with these, is just stamp them tone, tone on tone onto just a colored cardstock and then do like a white embossed sentiment on top and I think that would be a very classy and unique look where you just have this light background of the scene and then you could have your sentiment right on top would give a totally different look than actually painting it in and doing a very colorful scene. You can see I had a little bit of that green from the hill sort of bleed up into that beach area and that's only because I did not uh, wait long enough. I was not patient enough to allow that to dry before I started painting on the beach. I thought it was okay because they were both um, you know it's okay for there to be a little green there um, but if you're worried about that just let it dry or dry it with your heat gun if you're impatient before you move on to another area of watercolor that's right next to something that would have been wet so there I did 
heat set that now before I moved on to the sky. And for the sky, just doing a very light blue. You can see I am painting around those sailboats because they are not blue. And so if I would have painted the blue right on top of them, it may have sort of altered that color because they are not heat embossed. They are not going to resist the watercolor that goes over them. You just want to um, sometimes paint around those if you aren't painting the same color. I did add a touch of green to that blue sky while it was still wet, so it has a little bit more of a turquoise look. And to me that pulls together the blue of the water and the green of the trees and that hill right up into the sky. And then I'm also going to darken up those trunks of the trees by painting right over the top of them. And when you finish this card, it really looks like you took the time and painted the entire scene where you're really just adding some background colors to the all of the stamped detail. To finish this off, I used our stitched nested frames to die cut that stamped panel. And I've also included here our leaf stitched frames. This is our newest die set for frames. And this would also work really beautifully with this image. And then I stamped the sentiment. These are all of our newest sentiments. And for this card, I use the destination sentiment set, which is really great with the scenic stamps if you're looking for some more ideas for how to pull these all together into a card that you can send. And here's a look at the finished card. This card is a standard A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half. So you can use these large stamps for a variety of different size cards, sized cards too. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as our website and blog. And I'll link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. Here is that list of all the supplies used on the first card. And if you stay tuned here in just a moment, the supplies for the second card will be on screen. Thanks for watching.